Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast, powered by GamblersWorld.net. It is Monday, September the 9th. And as it's Monday, got Mr. Doug Upso, Mr. Chip Cherimbus with our new uh, sponsor, Bobby V Sports Bar. Chip's, Chip's uh, East Coasting it up right now. You go, go. If you, well, I don't know if it'll be there by the time this video gets posted, but if you're in that area, you can go and get them and harass them. Get them, buy them some lunch, buy them some dinner, say hello to the man. Uh, listen, folks, last day today, you see it right at the top of the board here, college NFL early board packages, last day, go get it. Football, listen, week three, college football, week two, NFL. We got a Monday night game we'll, we'll dwell on a little bit tonight. We'll maybe jump into some Thursday, depending where the conversation goes to start the show here. But tonight, live on Winter Circle, 7 p.m., it's a live show. I'll be here. I don't know who else is showing up. We're going to see – we're going to put it out there to everybody. If people are around, cappers on the site, more than welcome to come in. We've talked about this before, John. We know that. It's not really going to be a formatted show. It's going to be like, hey, what's uh, what's everybody got going on for today, if anything? What's going on for the week? What you looked at? It'll be a roundabout conversation like what we do the first usually 10 minutes of the show anyway. So you got that today live at 7 o'clock. The usual Friday live at 1 p.m. Mark Lawrence, Victor King. And, of course, these two gentlemen with me Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Hit the like buttons. Follow on all the socials. And the contest, I I know it's the last day for the early birds, but I don't think it's the last day for the contest. I think the contest, since it's a pick them, you can jump in anytime. Free money, folks. Let's see how you do. I do not think there were any perfect brackets yesterday <laughs> with the Patriots knocking off. We'll go. Let's we'll talk about that. Let's, let's say hello to, to Chipper on the street, the man on the street, Chip Terimis on the street. Patriots uh, knocking off Cincy. Are we shocked? I was really shocked. I mean, Cincy struggles early, but an outright win's an outright win. Let's jump into overreactions today on the Monday. Uh, Chip, how was your weekend? What's in well, score? How are able, you? I was able to sweep the board with a megabuck plays on Saturday, have an Iowa State win outright winner, and yesterday nice. with Indianapolis with the point spread winner. So the big games still continue to win. Of course, I fell short with the uh, uh, the Rams last night going overtime and getting beat. If we win the toss, maybe we win the game. We lose, we lost the game. Um, and that's the way it goes there, I guess. By the way, I am at uh, Bobby Valentine's Sports Gallery. It's a sports book in Stanford, Connecticut. Fabulous place right now. And uh, we got nothing but winners up there for this week, I hope. I, I need a review of a bacon cheeseburger, medium rare, and how the wings. Uh, I'd like that for... In the 80s, I actually did a restaurant review of Bobby Valentine's restaurants when he had one. And um, it was uh, it went viral. It was pretty cool if there was viral at the time, but there, there is there was no internet then. It, it, it was viral in the sense that it was probably on the local news and people talked about it. It was in a newspaper. Oh. Nice little ad. I love I, I love the newspaper. I love cracking open the paper on a Sunday and seeing everything in the paper. Doug Upstone, how are you? How's your weekend, fellow? The uh, well, the I was a little disappointed in the Tennessee outcome. I have to admit that. Um, <laughs> I had Tennessee. I didn't get into my nightmare. Go ahead. The, yeah, so I'm just gonna I'll let that one lay. I had some nice winners on Saturday, so not, you know I was, I was seven and two going to yesterday, but that and the Dolphins' inability to come ready to play didn't help at all yesterday. So you know, so I had a winning weekend overall, but just disappointment uh, somewhat yesterday, just how that turned out. But you know, hey, we got uh, got a, got another week ahead, and we got some uh, great action coming this weekend. And yeah, you know, Cincinnati—that's an interesting game. Well, I, for those who don't know, so um, Circa runs this big contest, okay? Uh, uh, the uh, Survivor Pool, okay? Where almost fifteen thousand people entered. I don't know if you were one of them, Sean, or not, but the um, uh, almost fifteen thousand. So a third of the field is gone, okay, basically <laughs> because of the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Okay? And the the other the other thing to me that really shocking and this it, it this happens every single year. So you go there, you go to Vegas, you plop down a thousand dollars on your Survivor contest, and forty five people never submitted a pick. Okay, thousand dollar so, hat. So it just uh, that's that's interesting to me. But uh, Cincinnati, the, I mean, th there's no excuse. Okay, I, I don't care how well New England played. There's no excuse for Cincinnati. Their coach has been. I mentioned this earlier. The coach has been saying. We're going to be prepared for the beginning of the season. We're going to play better in the uh, in August, which they did not do. They come out, they give zero effort essentially. Okay, in another game, and the other thing is is that their owner's cheap. There's 12 rookies on this team that made the team. 12. 
Okay, that's what you would expect maybe from Carolina, okay, to have 12 rookies, but a team that's supposedly a sub- Super Bowl contender and at worst an, uh, a division contender. Yes. So uh, that was, to me, that was just a shocking result. I, I didn't have the game. I, and I have a different survivor pool, but at least mine's a double survivor. So I, I, I get another shot at it. Not that I'll do any good anyways, but uh, – the, so yeah, that that was the that was a shocking result. Um, you know, I mean, there was just it was a it was kind of what you'd expect for week one. It was it was just kind of all over the place and a lot of surprising results. I thought. Yeah, I see. A four, I thought we were over fourteen thousand. What did people un, un, unlike him? Let's see, it's unbelievable. Hit the darn like button, you, you derelicts. Had the win, had Cincinnati. And, uh, I mean, when was that overwhelming in that context? Uh, I always look to fade it, and it, it were thirty-four percent of of fifteen hundred fifteen thousand people. Doug, New England thought of as the worst team, right? Them and Carolina are supposed to be the worst team, um, and yet they pull out a win. Now, no Chase Higgins, Burrow doesn't play preseason. He was coming off an injury. Under you think that under forty was going to be set? I mean, it opened like forty three came all the way down. Um, yeah, that was my free play. Was yeah, the under on that one? So. Yeah. I do not do a circus survivor. I do the millions. I do the uh, I'm four four and one in the millions there. So I'm, I'm, that's a nice start there. I'm in a Westgate, uh, so there's that. But yeah, the, I, I feel like picking one. No, I, I, that would be the one I would lose every week. You know, you mentioned Tennessee. Yeah, I had Tennessee up seventeen nothing. Are you kidding me? Uh, I, I had the Colts early. I got a two and a half and a two on one of the sites. So that was a, a win and a, a push. Denver plus five and a half, lose by six, killing me. Carolina gets run out. Cleveland, I did have – I don't even know who I won with. I, I only had a couple winners. I, I couldn't pick a total yesterday. It's just one of those days. But I mean, how, Tampa Bay and, and and Washington sailing over the top. I thought that game was like 23 to six kind of game written all over. And the Saints put up 47. Bryce Young, I saw that clown come out of either a timeout or – a quarter change, and he took a delay a game. And I knew, you know what? I will never bet Carolina. I already bet the Chargers minus three for next week. I saw that. I was like, I'm like, where are the lines? Who's got this game already? And that's like the five already. Um, yeah. I, I have one for you. I, I put this on uh, on X yesterday. See if you guys agree with this or not. I and watching the body language of Deshaun Watson, okay, in the game yesterday, I think Deshaun Watson is the Anthony Rondone of, of football, okay? <laughs> And what I mean by that is that Rondon plays for the Angels. Most people probably forgot, okay, that he's even on that team because he's been injured so injured often, so just like bad. Watson. Both of them are extremely overpaid. And or if you if you heard earlier this spring, uh, Rondon was asked about you know the importance of you know trying to turn things around with the Angels, and he goes, "It's hey, you know what? This is my job. Okay, you know I'm not worried about anything else. It's, it's my job." Okay. And Watson pretty much plays the same way, where it's just a job. He's getting paid, you know, and in terms of passion, there's none. There's just there's no willingness to want seemingly to want to get better and to motivate your teammates. I mean, you you could see in the huddle, Cleveland, when he was throwing overthrowing guys, you know, by I mean, not not just overthrowing by five, seven yards, overthrowing, throwing balls out of bounds. OK, to where no chance to catch the ball. I mean, you can see the body language of the linemen of some of the other players on the offensive side. They have no confidence in this guy that he's going to get the job done. I want, you know, that's, I think it's an unfair comparison. At least Rendon was hurt. Like the guy's been hurt the whole time. And then. Well, so is Watson. Watson. Uh, he, was just, he was suspended for a year and then he sat out half year because he had tired arm because he couldn't get rubbed down anymore, apparently. I mean, come on. And then you don't play him in a preseason. The guy took a, he was out for a year, played half a year because he was suspended still and still getting into game shape, looked terrible. Joe Flacco is my age, came in off of a buffet line, thrown for 350 yards a game. DRT came in and won a game. Who else is the other backup quarterback they had over there? Everybody on their team came in and won games except for the guy that's guaranteed $300 million. Radon gets hurt. Guys get hurt, and it's a fluky. And Radon's like, hey, man, I, it's my job. I worry about my family. At that point, the guy, he's snake bit, right? I mean, to say that he's – um, 
What's his name? Watson. I that's that's unfair. I mean, it's yeah, well, no, I, I I do I disagree on that because I I don't I don't think Rondon. Okay, he snake bit, but I mean, he he's he's always been somewhat injured. I mean, it's the Angels' fault for signing him. Yes, okay, that's 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 point one. Okay, no question about it. But this guy, in terms of you know uh, effort, okay, you I mean, yeah, he, it's I watched very one of the Angels games during the course of the season. I probably watch upwards. Not full games, but upwards of probably thirty to forty games. I mean, this guy just doesn't put the effort in. Okay, it, it's on a continual basis. So, I've seen some of his highlights. I, I mean, I don't see the guy's depressed. It just looks like he's just had the life sucked out of him. Like it's just one after another. Like he's pumped up, and then it's like, right? I mean, yeah, well, talking yeah, about the body I, language. I, I, he had one. He had one really, really good year, and it turned out to be the year he needed to be to get a big yeah, contract. World Series year. Yeah. Won a World Series. <laughs> that was it. Okay. I mean, before that, he was he was injured often enough. He was considered obviously a much better player then than he is today. But now I I I I, I look at these two guys. I see mere images of each other in terms. I'm talking about not the circumstances necessarily. Uh, even though Watson's been hurt plenty, but I, I just, I don't like either guy. And uh, I don't think, you know, they're, they're not an asset to their team in any way, shape or form. Well, people wanted baseball. You're getting the anthro and don't break down here, but let's bring Chipper. You, you mentioned the Miami Buffalo game. You know, Miami kind of looked a little lackluster out of the gate there. Buffalo slow first half rolled second half. They, it was a one point fave here. And I think it moved a little bit to two here, Miami and Buffalo Thursday night. Chip, did you take a look at that game? Like, I'm, I'm kind of, I haven't moved on this one. I got 10 games for NFL Sunday for next week already. I, I, I haven't moved on Miami. I sort of like Miami a little bit on Thursday night. I haven't even looked. Okay, there you have it. <laughs> the, uh, no, I, brought, I, I, see, I see your logic there. <laughs> I see your logic there. I mean, the, I mean, Miami. Miami looks like the better team. There's definitely some uh, defensive issues with Buffalo that was apparent against uh, against Arizona. Uh, so yeah, and then having to go on the road, even though they have on the road, they have played well in Miami in the past. And this and the heat, even though there'll be humidity, obviously at night game there won't be any sun, so that that's less of an yeah. issue there. But uh, but speaking of Miami, if you want to talk about Miami, how about uh, what happened to th- their coach? Okay. I mean, this guy looked like the all-time nerd ever. Okay, as a as a head coach, now he's got a do. Okay, he's got got the curly hair going. He's rocking chains. He's got a. I saw that he gets out of some uh, Mercedes deal uh, at the game the other day. It's South so, Beach, baby, let's go. So it's like he. I mean, he's. Um, I, I mean, Sonny Crockett's going to get a uh, run for his money now with with McDaniel <laughs> down there. Well, he needs the Lambo. He's really. <laughs> All right, listen, folks, hit the like button here. We're talking uh, some baseball today, but tonight at 7 p.m. live here on Winter Circle, we're going to do a little live show talking about the Monday night game, Jets and Niners, and, of course, live on Friday with the Football Friday. But we're going to do a little baseball today because, uh, you know, people like baseball for some reason, even though we just talked about it for five months. You think you have a little, little appetite for football, but we'll cover that in live stuff. Chip Charimbus. Bobby Valentine's spot, but we're going to talk New York Yankee baseball. Carlos Radon, Mr. Singer for the Royals, a 175 fave, a eight and a half. I think I'm about a 130 run line here, but you know me and the Yanks. I'm looking to fade the Yanks all the time. I think they're a joke. You got Judge, you got Soto. Why do guys still pitch to these two cats? I will not understand it. Uh, I like to say Judge is Shane Spencer on steroids. Maybe he's a little better than Dan Pasqua. Just a sort of comment section. We'll get the comment section going on Monday calling Judge Dan Pasqua. Chip, what do you like here with these two cats going? Royals pretty good versus lefties. Number six hitting team versus lefties. Here comes your Royals, Royals have won four in a row after having dropped seven in a row. They were at a high of 17 games over 500. The Yankees were once 31 games over 500, and now they're at 21-20. They've been playing five. Since they've been their losing streak, streak, they've been at 500 ball for the last three months. You know, these two pitchers, Singer and Rondon, have horrible records against their opponents here. And by the way, Valentine, who managed the Mets, was a Yankee fan, a diehard Yankee fan his entire life, so I'd tell you that. Uh, Rondon is 8-2 and two at home, and he's got a great ERA there, 308. I mean, the Yankees aren't favored heavily here, but against Kansas City, he's only 4-6. and six. His ERA is almost 5. And Brady Singer, who is 1-4 in his last five starts, 
His ERA against the Yankees is over five. He's given he's only two. So these two pitchers struggle individually against these two teams. So I think the game's supposed to go over the total. Um, Kansas City has a two and a half game lead over Minnesota, and how that happened. But uh, the Royals are there right now, and um, I think both these teams can put up some runs. And for the Yankees, of course, you mentioned it. If it's not Soto and Judge, um, they're, you know, they had added Rizzo, but otherwise I think their lineup is uh, lacking quite a bit. But I still think this game goes over because of these pitchers and because of the job the, the bullpen's been doing out of both these schools. I mean, schools, so both these uh, clubs. <laughs> Over eight and a half official chip trim is play here in the chat. Last week, we went three and four Monday to Friday. We had a three and four week, three and two in NFL, one and two in college football. It happens. But the baseball before that, me and Chip were on a nice little roll. Doug included. We had a nice, I think, 11 and two run coming into last week. So back to football. Chip's like in the over eight and a half here. With Radon and the Yanks, KC and Singer on the hill, uh, and I'm with you. I like, I like doing it myself. Doug, what do you think about this one here? Yeah, I'll, I'll go along with you guys. I'll say the unders the play, but I'm actually went a little different direction. Looked at the props. Brady Singer, 16 and a half outs. Okay, in this one, uh, he, he, this year on the road, he has uh, only surpassed or gotten to, I should say, 17 outs five out of 13 starts. He uh, I, at home at the K in Kansas City, he averages six innings. OK, so much better pitcher at at home than on the road. Yankees average five point one runs per game uh, on the season, five point six runs per game against right hand starters. Get this. Singer allows a 100 point higher batting average on base percentage and slugging percentage against left handed batters compared to right handed batters. Gee, I wonder what Aaron Boone's going to put in the lineup today, okay, for the Yankees in terms of left or right-handed. Um, Kansas City's got a rested bullpen. I think Matt Quater, Quat, Quat, oh, I can't say his name. Matt Quateraro, in this case, <laughs> he's going to go to the bullpen sooner than later. So I'm going to take Brady to go under 16 and a half outs. I like it. I actually have – Seven guys for Ruby props in this game today. I actually grabbed the judge, which is my lowest Ruby prop of the year, a plus 110. Because if you're going to give me judge who's got 50 homers at even at plus money, I got to take it. Most times he's like minus 105 every day for Ruby. But him, Soto is a 165. Again, a guy with 40 homers. A 165 Ruby on, I'll sign me up. And then everybody on, I'll take on the Royals. There's a bunch of guys at plus two. Here we go. Fam is 225. Gary L, Renfro, Furman, all 225 ribby guys. Uh, they hit lefties. They're hitting well. I, I like the over. I think it's, a, I, like you said, this guy's going to get knocked out early. I think Radon gives up runs. I think this ain't a half. I hate using the term. It's a gift. And we all talk about free money when we talk about our Gambler's World pick em football contest, but I think this one sails over the eight and a half. That's just my opinion and the official play. Chip agrees, over eight and a half. Doug will be looking at another AL powerhouse or two here. The Baltimore Orioles, who've been slumping a bit here. Uh, Maury Povich's nephew. We just joked that it's related to Maury Povich because we're old guys. But Cade Povich versus the youngster Brian Bello. Boston Red Sox, a small fave here, about 120 at home. Total of nine and a half. I, 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 I'm sure you got a bunch of numbers on on Povich because I got a, lot, a bunch of them lined up here, so I'm not going to come in and steal all the thunder on him. I, I like Bello. I, you know, he's had a nice season last year. Same. I, I and, and if I'm going to step on your feet a little bit here, I, I apologize, but I, you know, I talk about all these young pitchers and the back of their baseball card and innings and this and that. This guy is consistent to where he was last year, um, and I like to see that. I don't care even if I'm not a Red Sox fan. Thank goodness you see some pitcher being consistent year round as the innings add up. But I'll, that's all I'll say there until you you give us your breakdown here. Orioles, Red Sox, take it away, Doug. Seven o'clock tonight. In all right, Be Bello. You know the uh, twelve and seven, four seventy five ERA, but he's been better of late. Okay, he's made some nice adjustments. Uh, he's got a three twenty six ERA in his last five starts. Uh, Povich, eh, two and seven, five seventy six ERA. Uh, you know, he's, his, his ERA in his last five is 513, but a big reason it's that low in his last start, he went seven and a third shutout innings. So it, that's, a, that's a rarity, okay, for him to be that good. 
So, yes, Boston has the pitching advantage. Boston, though, has lost five of their last seven to fall into a three-way tie, four games behind Minnesota for the last wild card spot. Uh, Baltimore doesn't come in hot either. Uh, they lost both games, the last two games against uh, Tampa Bay since the All-Star break, 24 and 24. Okay, not not much to like here from that standpoint. So even though the the, the Bo Sox look like the right side, it just in theory, Boston is 16 and 24 against left-handed starters. And in their last 10 games against lefty starters, they're averaging 2.5 runs per game. This one. Baltimore can still hit, averaging five runs per game. They hit right-handed starters hard. Uh, I just like Baltimore here as an underdog on the road against Boston. Official Doug Upstone video pick. The Orioles plus 110. Small doggy for Doug here. Chipper, what do you think of this one? It's tough for me to take the Orioles, um, considering – Doug, this powerhouse hitting team had a 163 batting average in the series against the Rays. They're coming back, and like you said, this um, this fellow, he seems to accumulate wins. He's 12 and 7, and ZRA is almost up to five. But this Povich pitched that one hitter that shut out game last time out against a minor league team. He threw it against the Chicago White Sox. So I'm not giving <laughs> any credit whatsoever. I think that um, he's going to give a plethora of runs in. Fenway and um, you know an ERA of almost five for the starter for Boston Bellow. I could see this game going over as well. I lean a little bit toward the. Um, you have uh, the Orioles, so I'm gonna be on that side as opposed. No, to no, them. take Boston if you like them. I don't care. <laughs> I, I think they'd go over. I wasn't planning on taking the Orioles, and I wasn't planning on taking Boston. I think, that, uh, once again, the total is the key here because of Povich. I just don't uh, have any confidence in him. He's ERA 5.76. And after coming off that great game, I really expect a letdown here out of him. Chip Trimbus does not like Kate Povich. Doesn't hold back. My mom says you don't say something nice about somebody, you don't say it all. He hates the guy. And why not? I'm going to pour fuel on that fire. Here we go, my Kate Povich numbers. Ready for this? 7.16 ERA last seven, a 190 whip, 12.50 ERA on a road, 3.30 batting average against. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And, and, I, and here I'll go into my little rant overall on the Orioles here. You mentioned 24 and 24 40 since the All Star break, and I was like, in, in July, sure, sign me up for some Orioles World Series tickets. They got the best farm system. Make a trade, bring in the starting pitcher, get some bullpen help. Who'd you bring in? Eflin? Okay, that's a nice summer guy to bring in. Where's the big stud? You didn't get one. You got a guy in Trevor Rogers who's on the injured list. I think Eflin got hurt. Nothing in the bullpen. You totally wet the bed, Baltimore. You're 500 since uh, the All-Star break. The Yankees, not much better, right? These two guys, if, if one of those teams got high, it would have left the other guy in the dust. Nope, you play 500 ball because the Yankees don't help their bullpen. Chip mentioned Rizzo coming back off the injured list. That's what we're waiting for, a guy coming back off a concussion who's 36 years old. DJ LeMay, who forgets how to hit. What a joke. What a joke this freaking team is. And Bello, I'll give my little props to Bello. Um, 555 ERA at the end of May. Nice summer months. Dropped it a full run, basically, to, to 465 coming into September. So like to see that out of a young pitcher. Nice improvement. Good for him. Good for the Red Sox. Bright lights going forward to uh, next year with them and Cutter Crawford and the rest of that staff. But that's my little rant on Kate Bovich, the Orioles doing nothing, the Yankees being pathetic and cheap, and Boston. There you go, Boston fans. I'll give you a little pat on the back, even though I hate your clam chatter and everything Boston as a Yankee guy. All right, hit the like button if you like to hate on the Red Sox like I do. Now, I got a great matchup here. Cy Young Award winner, Kyle Hendricks. I'm just kidding here. Cubbies, Dodgers, the late game, 10 o'clock. I need... 11 wins. Actually, I think 12 wins. I need 11 and a half to get over their win total. In the next 20 games here, Cubbies to hit their 84 and a half win total. It's going to be tough because you just played the Yankees. You got the Dodgers. But then you got some Cubbies. I think you got the Pirates and the Rockies back to back. You got some teams you can win. Am I thinking them as a 170 dog here, 160 dog versus Bueller and the Dodgers? And Bueller laying 190. I I don't even want to get into Kyle Hendricks. What's there to say? The guy's 3-11 and and single-handedly probably cost me my win ticket on the Cubbies. But let's talk about Bueller. At 28, the guy looked like he was on a Hall of Fame trajectory. He had a Tommy John surgery, but the guy, whatever, he's still going to be good. Two Tommy Johns. Looks like trash this year. 
Still not finding his way. I'm going to look at the over here, not just the 10. You want to go 10 for this for this game? I, I get it because I think we got two gas cans. One, Hendricks is just on fire. The man comes out, he's on fire, and it's bullpen day. But even Bueller's going to go up to runs. I'm going to go Dodgers team total over five and a half. It's minus 105. Listen, if we've anything about the Dodgers, we've heard of at the start of the season why they're supposed to win 110, 115 games. It was because of Betts and Otani and Freeman and all this other nonsense and you know, Muncy, Will Smith, T. Oscar. The bats are there. Uh, why do I think this? The, the Dodgers will have five by the third inning. Uh, someone here, I don't have any props for this one. I will grab after this show, why not put like 25 bucks on Betts, Otani, and Freeman homer? Because I think somebody's hit a homer in the first inning for the Dodgers to put three on the board. I think this is going to be a slugfest. Dodgers are going to score nine themselves. You'll probably get a four-piece from the Cubbies. And, again, some numbers here on Hendricks. I mean, 301 batting average against on the season. What else is there to say? There is nothing else to say. He's not getting stronger at 36 years old or whatever he is in September. That's not happening. The Dodgers' bats have been improving a little bit since Betts has come back. And Otani's just having a ridiculous year. Give me the team total over five and a half. Doug, thoughts on over five and a half, or do you prefer a regular just over to ten for the game? The uh, well, when I when I looked at it, it was still nine and a half. So, but I'm going to stick with it anyways. And by the way, I also have a play at Gamblers World on this game, but it won't be on the total because that's what I'm going to talk about, just like Sean did here. Uh, you know, Hendricks. You know, it's. You know, you, you always sort of knew, and it, as a Cub fan, this is going to be the case, is that w- when a guy's best pitch is a changeup, as he gets older, the, the, nar- it, the narrow or the, it, the difference in uh, velocity changes. So you have less of a difference, okay, when you're tr- trying to throw changeups and get guys out. So that's his problem. And along with that, what goes? Command. So at 34, he can't get anybody out. His whip is 151, okay? Tommy John for Bueller, two of them, you know, the track record is you have Tommy John once, you're fine, okay? You can overcome it, no problems. You have two, that becomes problematic, okay? It's like 50-50 going forward, what your career is going to look like. He's 30 years old. Uh, It doesn't look good right now. Uh, Same thing with him. Last five starts, 729 ERA. His whip is even worse than Hendricks at 161. Terrible. Hendricks is working on five, uh, four straight overs. The last three times he's pitched against the Dodgers, he's gone over. Bueller's working on three one and one overs right now. I think there's going to be plenty of runs scored, and you know, I I would not be. Eleven sounds like a lot of runs, but seeing that Sean's already guaranteed you nine for the Dodgers, all the Cubs got to do is score two. So I think we're all good. <laughs> yes, yes, Chip. Yeah, well. It's kind of interesting. I mean, here's Kyle Hendricks. Doug, this guy, didn't he lead the major leagues in the ERA a few years ago? And now he's coming in with a 6.6 ERA. Um, Hendricks has really been horrible, 3-11. and 11. I played this game over as well. And um, one of the reasons, um, I don't know if you two guys are aware, that these two teams met on September 9th in 1965. And there was a guy named Sandy Koufax pitched his fourth career no-hitter a one nothing perfect game over the Cubs, Doug. And I remember that morning we seeing that and saying, you know, three was the three was the name. Uh, was the number, shall I say? And then Kofax threw his fourth career no hitter. Also on the date, nineteen seventy, Benny McLean was suspended for carrying a gun around in the locker room. And um, Mike Tyson was indicted on this date in ninety one for um, his rape of Desiree Washington. And Tom Brady played a record three hundredth game on this date in 2021 otherwise i like the cubs and the dodgers to go over the total. the now i have a, I, the, I now I, I knew you had to look this up i don't know if it showed it was was the opposing pitcher larry jackson by the way for sandy Kofel? you know i didn't i didn't check that i didn't look at but i, 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 I that, that's that's my that, that'd be my guess okay on that one anyway so that and then i, I have a quick story of denny mclean for you all right so uh eighth grader okay I get my parents for eighth grade, brand new glove. Okay. A left-handed pitcher. Okay. Play, play outfield, left-handed pitcher. I get a glove, a Denny McLean glove. Denny McLean was right-handed. I got a left-handed Denny McLean glove. <laughs> Is that-, <laughs> that always cracked me up. I actually still have it as a matter of fact. Uh, it, that's that's it, instead it, of it, ordering it, off Amazon, you order off Timu. You get the, the left-handed glove. That's like the <laughs> Is that is that the meme that they do now? 
I just, uh, and, and the, by the way, the reason that there was such a thing as a, that Denny McLean even had a glove is the fact that he won 31 games. Okay. And so that's, that's why he was that popular. And obviously the last pitcher to win 30 games. Kyle Hendricks, 2016, 16 and eight, a two, one, three ERA, 2020, a two, eight, 80 ERA and 12 starts during COVID. That's it. Yeah. That, that's his, that's his nice career that he's had. He's had a very nice career. Yeah. I mean, he has. It's just it's at the end of the line. That's and, all. and have a you're three and eleven. He would have been ninety three and uh, sixty nine, which is a decent kind of record. His ERA yeah. it's three seventy career. It's six sixty this year. Like that totally like kind of jacks up his numbers a little bit. He had a nice little career. Well, I still yeah. get paid. I you know whether it's this guy or any guy, you hate to see the last years of guys like just. I, Listen, when you're an elite athlete, we can make fun of guys as common players. You just have that mentality like you don't want to give up. But as a fan, you look at it, whether you like it or not, you look at the back card, you're like, oh, man, why'd you stay? Why'd you stay these years to, to compile? And finally, Mandel dropped his career average under 300. Yeah. He, one right. he ended up at 298. And yeah. Hit last year. <sighs> Sad. What are you going to do? All right, listen, I know what you can do. You hit the like button, number one. You hit the like button here on the Winter Circle Podcast. You take the over in the Dodger game, five and a half team total. You take the over Yankees game total, eight and a half from Chip. You got the Baltimore Orioles plus 110 side play for Mr. Doug Upstone. You have the 599 early bird NFL college football wrapping up today. So there's still time left for that. We got Jets Niners tonight. We didn't talk about it. You know why? Because we got a live show at 7 o'clock tonight. Maybe one of these guys pop in. It's a free-for-all. It's open form. It's like open mic night. I'm going to go there. We're going to come in. I'll do a little stand-up. You know, I'll do a little dance. You know, I'll bust the – there'll be nobody here. I might be playing with a Millennium Falcon on screen. I don't know what's going to happen. It'll be our first time doing that. You know, it's a, on the Friday live, at least, you know, I'm guaranteed guests. Monday night, who knows what's going to happen. It could be it could be like Mr. Rex. It could just be like a blank screen and a little puppet coming in to talk to me. So <laughs> there better be some people coming in the comment section coming to say hello. But if, um, if you don't get the the like the the old at the end of the day on uh, regular TV when you get the screen with with that had the uh, uh, the end of the day they play the national anthem yeah you know, just a little flirt or flag playing on the side right. next to me split screen oh, yeah, buddy. when I'm well, sure I didn't hear that after a while back that's for sure that's for sure it was of course <laughs> yeah we a lot a lot of channels now on it and not only that we could again we could rant on this for what to watch NFL games what do you need. Uh, Peacock, Amazon, YouTube TV, Paramount, regular cable, YouTube. You need you need six or seven different streaming networks just to watch TV nowadays. Oh, and and by the way, uh, fourteen point two million people had the Packers and uh, bought the Packers and um, uh, Eagles to which, watch that uh, game. Yeah, so th- that's double their previous uh, regular season game last last December. So there you go. Well, at least it was a good matchup. A lot of these, sometimes they, they send these terrible teams. You get, people, poor people in England and Germany get to watch, like, the Jaguars versus, like, the the Patriots or some crap. At least these guys got two playoff teams and team with Super Bowl kind of ambition. So South America has to like us a little bit for that. You know, they got that going for us. We gave them good teams. To, and then Love gets hurt. How about that, Packer fans? <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Anyway, all right, we're going to wrap this puppy up, put a little bow on it. We'll be back tomorrow. Me, Chip Trembus. I don't know. There might be a Matt Fargo sighting. I saw a little email this morning. Maybe we add him to the mix. We'll see how that goes. But for Chip Trembus, Doug Upstone, myself, Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast, hit the like button, gamblersroll.net. For me, Chip, Doug, all the premium stuff. I didn't even mention the 3738 package is guaranteed. So go get that as well. NFL week one ending tonight. Hope to see you in the live show. And good luck back tomorrow. Bye-bye.